In this video on myelodysplastic syndromes, I would like to discuss some aspects of the epidemiology of the disease. Now, epidemiology literally means that which is upon the people or a study of what is upon the people coming from the, the words epi um, in Greek, which means upon, demi that comes from demos or people, and this last part, logi, comes from logos, or a study of. So a study of what is upon the people. And our interest today is specifically in the incidence and the prevalence of this condition. Now the largest studies in MDS epidemiology are from Western countries and most of the data actually comes from the United States of America. So we'll focus a little bit on some of the data here from one of the largest uh, surveillance programs called the the SEER database S E E R and this stands for surveillance epidemiology and end results and this SEER database is regularly updated and gives us a good idea of the incidence of different types of diseases and cancers in the USA so if we start with the incidence of MDS, we must be reminded of what incidence means. And incidence is basically a rate. So this is a rate, which means a number of new cases per, in this instance, 100,000 people per year. So you can see on this graph the word incidence appearing per 100,000 persons. That would be per year. And on the x-axis, we can see age groups or age categories present. And I think it is clear from this um, graph here that there is an e exponential increase in the incidence of MDS in patients over the age of 50. As a matter of fact, if you look at this carefully and we divide this graph here into two sides, you will see that this part here um, consisting of all the patients less than 50 years old is only 6%. And on the right hand of this graph, all the others would then be 94% of cases would be over the age of 50. And if we zoom into this a little bit further and we just look at the group over the age of 60, this would be about 86%. So although one can see that there are a few cases of MDS in the younger population, this is actually a disease of the elderly. And most often in those younger cases, there are other predisposing factors and, and that's what one has to look out for. For instance, Fanconi anemia in young children or perhaps previous exposure to chemotherapy or radiation in younger adults. But as a general rule, it is a disease of the elderly. Now, this graph does not tell the whole story. There are quite a number of other important things that one should also mention. One interesting factor is that males seem to get MDS more often than females, and there seems to be a 1.5 times increased ratio in males compared to females. Also in white or ca ca Caucasian patients, it seems to be more common than in other race groups. But I'd like to zoom in a little bit more on the incidence issues uh, with patients with MDS and see what the influencing factors on these numbers are. Another way of looking at these data is to consider that uh, there are about 10,000 new cases of MDS every year in the United States alone and there are about 60,000 people living in the United States with MDS at present. Now, this comes from data from 2012, but many people think that these numbers could even be higher. So many people would consider these numbers an or underestimation of the truth. So if we look at this for a for a minute and, and just consider what may have influenced the underestimation of this disease. One of the factors has been that in the year 2000, the WHO reclassified the behavior code of MDS within the ICD oncology category from a 1 to a 3. Now a 1 used to be 
a category where there was uncertainty whether this disease was benign or malignant. But A3 means that it is now widely accepted that this disease is a malignancy. So MDS is a cancer. Now this led to a change in the way MDS data was recorded. So since 2001 MDS became reportable to population-based cancer registries such as the SEER database that we mentioned before and from which this, these data are derived. So this became important that patients were now in many countries notifiable. For instance, in 2002, um, MDS became a not notifiable disease in Australia. So people are now actually picking these cases up and recording them. And it was very clear within the first few years that the number of cases that were recorded per year increased until a new stable level was reached. But one of the other challenges was that people were not diagnosing MDS. Patients would have unexplained cytopenias and people would only look at peripheral blood smears and do a few basic nutritional tests, but they would often forget to do a bone marrow and this is a major problem. An interesting example of how MDS diagnoses are perhaps not made comes from data from the so-called National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, and this was number three, which showed that about 11.0% of males and 10.2% of females over the age of 65 were anemic. So they all had anemia. And of this group, one third had unexplained anemia. Now when they looked a little bit more carefully at this group, they found that 17% of these patients, more or less, had features that could be attributable to MDS. It does not mean that they all had MDS, but they definitely had characteristics that would be suggestive of MDS. So I think this tells us that a number of patients with unexplained anemia are not diagnosed and MDS may often be missed. And, and I think the, the message for us is that MDS should always be considered at least in patients uh, who have unexplained anemia and in particular in the elderly. The other issues that may lead to underdiagnosis um, is that of the masking effect. And let's just put that here the so-called masking effect of age as well as of comorbid disease. So often the unexplained anemia or cytopenia is ascribed to another underlying condition that the elderly person may have or the fact that the patient is elderly may lead to a basic examination and then it is often felt that going further could be too tiresome and some studies have actually shown this as what is called a workup fatigue workup fatigue uh, where people stop examining or stop looking for a cause of an unexplained anemia or cytopenia after some basic investigations has been done there's always also the challenge of of knowledge training in mds especially in medical school it was previously considered a rarer disease so more recently a so-called knowledge gap has been described and this basically refers to the fact that primary care physicians often have a very limited knowledge of mds and i think this this probably relates to training uh, at medical schools rather than anything else so a very in-depth uh, study recently done in australia more than five million people showed that the incidence of MDS was almost double than that which was previously reported in the normal registries, which really confirms the fact that MDS is not as rare as previously thought. Just for interest's sake, I'd like to give one um, uh, comparison that is informative, and that is, if you look at the 
incidence of MDS, so let's just say that I stands for incidence, um, and you compare that with acute myeloid leukemia, that is very similar. But if you look at the survival, survival of MDS, when compared to AML, MDS patients have a much greater survival than AML patients, which means that in terms of prevalence, prevalence, you will have a much higher proportion of MDS patients surviving, so the prevalence of MDS would thus also be higher than that of patients with AML. So what can we expect in the future? And why would this be important? So let's just look at a few issues that we can expect to see in the future related to MDS. I think we can expect the incidence to increase. And this is probably due to a number of reasons. One, uh, the population is aging. So as the population becomes older, we will see that this graph will just go up and up. Secondly, with more patients developing secondary MDS, more patients getting chemotherapy, radiation, and so forth, that number may also increase the total incidence. And I think now that MDS is recognized as a cancer, uh, there is a lot of effort to improve awareness. And where previously we did not have many treatments available for MDS, um, doctors were often also less aware of of what can be done for these patients. And, and, and I think as every doctor gets more and more patients in his practice with MDS, the awareness will improve or, and will increase and thus more patients will be diagnosed. The other um, issue is more, more thorough clinical workup. So patients who are worked up more and more thoroughly uh, will often be more likely to be diagnosed. And I think here um, we are also worldwide looking at an increased awareness of doing bone marrows in patients with unexplained cytopenias or anemia and that will lead to an increase in the diagnosis. But I think the prevalence will also increase. So if we say that the survival is currently the main factor that drives the increase in prevalence, we are expecting the survival of MDS patients to improve further because of the large number of new therapies that are now available and this is quite important as well um, as as, in, as survival improve the number of patients living with a disease will increase and that will have a certain bearing on healthcare planning and healthcare resources and, and we need to be prepared for that um, most of these patients become transfusion dependent at some stage in their disease and they often require very specialized blood products and very expensive blood products. So healthcare planners should take account of this and include that uh, in, in the healthcare planning and policies. So I also think an interesting positive effect here would be that one could expect the transfusion requirements um, to decrease over time because of the availability of many new therapies, which would lead to patients becoming transfusion independent. And um, the, in that way, we will also see a decrease in the requirement for blood transfusions in general. So I think that is a sort of an overview of the incidence and prevalence issues in myelodysplastic syndromes and some of the factors that influence these graphs, graphs that we see here.